Three co-workers who live hundreds of miles apart consider each other family now. One is here in Georgia, the others in Florida and Oklahoma. Before the pandemic, they knew each other professionally, but not really personally. That changed last summer as the Fox Medical Team's Beth Galvin explains. The pandemic left many of us at home working remotely, so gone temporarily were the water cooler conversations and catching up on each other's lives. But when a Cancer Treatment Centers of America employee learned that her colleague was in trouble, she got to work. At 45, Janine Ramirez felt like she was running out of time. My kidney function started declining pretty rapidly, and I was uh, placed on dialysis. She was working remotely for CTCA, raising a teenage daughter and trying to find a kidney donor. And by July... My nephrologist told me that I did not have much longer because my function was going really fast, and dialysis wasn't slowing it down or anything. Um, so I started making end of life preparation. Ramirez shared the news with Jane Bridges, a CTCA co-worker working remotely from her home in Florida. She says, Jane, I've got one to six months to live. My doctor just told me. And it just, it broke my heart. Bridges had never met Ramirez in person, but she immediately checked to see if she could donate a kidney to her. But I'm diabetic. And that's one of the criteria that, that they say, nope, Sorry. So Bridges wrote an email. I uh, sent out to, I think it was about 220 of my contacts within CTCA. And I said, could you please, if you or anybody that you know that might be willing to donate, could you go out and, and see if you could donate? In Tulsa, Oklahoma, Jimmy Dybert, a CTCA pharmacist, got that message. Yeah, it took me by surprise. Um, because I, I had no idea. And the 45-year-old married father of two felt like that email was intended for him. Within about an hour and a half, um, in fact, I went on the Emory Transplant Center um, page to start the process. Dybert started the screening process, and by late September... He typed, can you talk? Actually, his first words were just, I'm a match. <laughs> 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 um, and, I, and I remember questioning... A match for what? And I remember just bawling and crying and sharing it with my daughter. Um, we both were just a ball of mush because <laughs> it was hard. It was hard to believe that I had a person that was a match. But then it was that second hump of will this person still go through? The answer came early on the morning of November 11th at Emory University Hospital. I was literally sitting there praying, you know, Lord, please let him show up. And sure enough, um, the elevator dinged and I didn't turn around. I was just kind of meditating and I heard his voice and I just let out this big sigh. That day, one of Dybert's two kidneys was removed and carefully sewn into Ramirez's abdomen. The doctor said his kidney started working immediately on the table. By the next day, I literally can feel like brightening up and like, I won't say energetic, but I just felt good. It was a weird feeling of good because I hadn't felt good in years. Jimmy Dybert says the experience changed him. How many people get the opportunity to save someone's life and do it in, in such a real way like that? I, I felt like it was an honor for me. And Janine Ramirez has taken her second chance and run with it. I can keep up with my 17-year-old daughter, which has not been that way in years. I'm, I'm walking like to the front of my subdivision now, which is about a good mile and a half, two-mile walk. Um, I'm not winded. And Jane Bridges, that coworker who made all of this happen, the one that Ramirez had never met, she flew up right after the surgery to stay with Ramirez and take care of her. For your Fox Medical team, I'm Beth Galvin.